Hello accountability buddies, this is Les, and another episode of Les is More Healthy. It's too sunny, so I'm going to Casey Neistat it with some sunglasses on, um, which means I can't see if I'm in frame or not, which is fine, it's fine, it's all good. Um, so uh, I did over 30 miles this weekend on my bike. Um, let me check Kamut. Is Kamut the best? Probably Kamut is not the best place to see that um, Strava would probably be better. Yeah, so 17 and a half miles yesterday, 16.8, so almost another 17 the day before. So that's at 30, 30 around 35, not quite 35 miles um, over Sunday and Monday. So uh, I'm not walking today because I don't feel like it, honestly. Um, I could walk. I'm a little, only a little sore, but I'm sore from the saddle um specifically where it pokes into um the soft sensitive bits um around my sit bones my sit bones are pretty sore and then also into um my nether bits um the taint if you will <laughs> um if i don't think there's any like great better way to put it other than it is well it's a perineum area um so that area um where your your body contacts the seat so you got the sit bone areas so around your butt um that hits the back of the saddle and then in front of that um that area between um hits the saddle as well and that is very sensitive um I'm not sure, you know, I move the saddle around a lot. Part of it, part of the problem is, is that on Sunday, the saddle nose was tipping up as I went over bumps. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what caused that to happen. Um, I really cranked that, that there's a, a bolt up in there that goes into a nut. I cranked that down and finally it stopped moving around. Um, but you got to crank that way more than I've ever needed to crank a bolt like that before. And um, it just, it kept moving. So it might be just that the clamp on the seat post is uh, old and a little worn out. So I might look at um, putting a new seat post in there, which I really don't want to do. The seat post that's in it is original to the bike. Um, not that it's particularly special. It's just like a race light, um, aluminum saddle post. Um, but I like the look with the bike. I want to, you know, replace as little as possible for the bike. Um, but it does look like I may need to replace it. I'm also going to replace the saddle. The saddle was, um, not original to the bike. And then I had replaced it with, um, a different saddle and then I finally put a um, my charge spoon on it which was, has been a seat that's been comfortable on other bikes um, for whatever reason how I sit on this bike um, it is uncomfortable as all get out um, I I'm just not gonna tolerate that seat at all so that you might find that on Facebook Mike marketplace um, or I put it on a bike for sale uh, yeah, so that's a whole thing. Um, temporarily, I am going to pull the seat um, off a, off one of the other bikes and put that on. Um, I might pull it off the, the gift bike that my wife was given. Um, she's currently using the seat that was on the, um, the, the track that I had been riding. Um, that's all swapped out. But anyway, so I'm, I'm going to use one of those saddles for the time being. I have found a saddle on AliExpress that looks like it's a little wider um, and more appropriate for a woman than the charge spoon. It's a little wider in the rear end area, so it'll give my behind a little more support. Um, it also has a cutout in the perineum area, which is what I am contacting a lot. So it has that cutout, so it's a relief channel to relieve pressure in that area. And that should solve the majority of my problems. And, but that will take another 15, 20 days to get here. So there's that. Um, one final bike update. Um, the tires that I had put onto the Kona to, so that I could, I could go up to a 10 speed, 
um, are horribly out of true. And I trued them up the best I could, but I think that there's a dent on one side that I obviously can't, I don't have the tools or, or know how to pull that out. Um, I probably can eventually, but that would require a truing stand. Um, I could probably also take it to the bike shop and have them true it out. But the tire that came with it is in very good condition. It's very true. The guy who owned the bike before me had it tuned up. Um, and so there's a $25 part I can buy to turn that wheel set into a hub that will expect, accept my 10 speed cassette. So I can turn that into what I need. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order that $25 part, um, this week when I paid it, when I, for, on payday and then on, you know, probably by Friday night, I'm going to have that part in my hot little hands. Um, and I'll be able to put that on. So there are a couple different versions of it on the Amazon and, um, yeah, so I'm going to order one of those and I will be able to, um, put that original rim and hub set onto the bike and get um, 10 speeds on it. So that's really cool. That also means I'm going to have to rip that horrible tire off that horrible rim <laughs> and put it back onto uh, my the, the old rim. Um, a task I am not looking forward to. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times. Those tires were the worst tires I've ever put onto a bike. Um, I've never had the kind of difficulty putting a tire on that I had with, with that particular tire. Um, the tire is fine for riding. It's actually fantastic on the rail trail. It was really nice on the rail trail. Um, but what a bear to put on. So, um, so yeah, so that's that, um, in terms of the bike updates, I'm sure many of you are getting bored with the bike updates. Um, so part of the reason I'm not walking today is because my stomach is queasy. This is, um, a consistent problem I've been having and I don't know, I felt fine when I got up, um, drank a coffee, felt fine, um, took my medication and had my morning shake. And then it was around that point where I started to feel queasy. Now, I know the morning shake is soy free and dairy free. So it's not soy or dairy that's causing the problem. Um, so I'm wondering if it's one of my two medications. I take a blood pressure medication and a cholesterol medication. Um, and it, I'm wondering if it's either one of those that's making my stomach upset. Um, this has happened a couple of other mornings and so I have some crackers. I still feel a little queasy, but not, not great. Also, I rode 35 miles over the last two days. I, I feel like I deserve a break day. Actually, you know, this is like another thing too, is like my body needs time to recover from those rides. And so taking a day off is fine. I've got all week to hit my four days of exercise. Um, and that brings me to my next thing is that the Trevor Project rides are going to start this coming weekend because, um, tomorrow is the 31st, Thursday is the 1st, the 3rd is the 3rd of June. So the third, the Trevor Project, um, Pride Challenge, the Pride, Pride June chat, whatever it's called, 52 miles in June. Um, I'm going to start doing that on the third. And what I'm going to do is I am going to ride the rail trail from Danvers. So sort of recreating what I did this past weekend, ride the rail trail from Danvers up through Topsfield. Um, I'm going to look at the map here. Um, it goes from, you can actually ride it the whole way. So, um, you can ride it, well, not the rail trail, but you can ride, um, up to Boxford on the rail trail. There's not a whole lot going on in Boxford. I don't, I don't remember if there's a cafe or not. Um, but then you get off onto the roadways as part of the East Coast Greenway and you can ride that the whole way to the border. And what I would like to do is, um, so ride that rail trail to its almost terminus. I, I'll ride it the whole way to the terminus, turn around and then, then get off. Um, 
and then ride upward uh, to, what is that, Newburyport? Um, yeah, to Newburyport where I can get a cup of coffee. Um, and that, that whole ride, if I started in Salem, um, and went on up, um, to the border of New Hampshire, um, would be 41 miles. So I'll get a lot of the, the, um, probably cut in 10 miles. So it's probably a 30 mile ride from Danvers. Um, add three or four miles on for the bike ride from my house to Danvers. And, um, yeah, so, so I'll probably get 30 or 40 miles in this weekend, um, as, as part of this ride. Um, so that's cool. That's going to be fun. Um, the rail trail was really, really nice, very gritty. <laughs> um, it's like a sandy gravel. It's very smooth. It's, it's really well maintained for most of it. There's some little off ramps where I think you can get, um, into like some of the, um, downtown areas. Um, so like there's some spots in Topsfield where I think you can get off and get a cup of coffee in downtown Topsfield. So I might check that out. Um, they're, they're not official like routes off of it. There are a couple, um, where I think you could, you could get into, um, like some nicer areas. So anyway, um, I'm going to do that rail trail, um, section. I'm also going to figure out, um, a route from my house to work using some of the trails in the area. I know that there's part of the rail trail or trail system that goes through Salem to, um, Marblehead and then to Lynn. And then I can ride that, um, ride a short distance through downtown Lynn. So yeah, so that's, that's what I'm, what's going on. Um, I feel pretty good other than my behind and, uh, sort of, yeah, be between my legs, which feels like an awful way of put it that, um, you know, the bike was that, that ride was really, really, the roads are rough. The rail trail is smooth. The roads were rough and you don't, I don't, I don't notice it in the car. But on a bike, man, I, also I have the tires pumped up a lot. I think I could re release some of the air, uh, particularly in the back tire to absorb, to give me a little bit more cushion. But whoo, that was, that was rough. Um, so anyway, um, that's where I'm at. And with that, I will say thank you, uh, for your subscriptions. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the comments. It's incredibly motivating um, to get those. And I just want to say thank you for being here and I will see you next time.